me, my, my healing journey actually began at a very early age, although I didn't realize it until adulthood, quite honestly, that that is what got me through and um, helped me be the person that I am and just and and get and go through a process of healing that didn't actually include a lot of people. I felt like I was alone in that space for a very long time. And even as a child, I felt alone because I was harmed, oh, about six or seven years old. And that initial harm went on for a couple of years. And then like some survivors, some of us who think that we've gotten smarter and our intuition is better, um, I tell you that you, I, I, it never ceases to amaze me how, how sly predatory folks can be. So anyway, my first interaction with harm was not my last, but through all of those and to this point today at the position that I'm in, it has been art that has gotten me from the beginning of that healing journey to this space that I'm in now, which is so far removed and so much better and so much more open and whole, I sometimes when I think back and I look on it, it amazes me how I was able to sustain myself, my sanity, my body, my the integrity that I have about, about my body. I felt lucky to be able to sustain that over that long haul. And how did that happen? With the little resources that I had, art, 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 and all of ex its expressions. So for me, it began with mud pies, not knowing what to say that was happening to me or happened to me when you're five or six or seven, you just don't have the words. There aren't even words really in the community yet for things that happen to, to kids at that age back in, in the late 60s and early 70s. So for me, my expression of telling in that way was art. Um, mud pies initially, uh, just to keep my hands busy. And then from mud pies to like mud sculptures, to heads and busts of these animal-like looking creatures. I wouldn't say animal-like, monstrous creatures or things that were very, very curious that shouldn't be what they are. And in those things, I think were the questions that I had for me, like what happened? Why do I feel this way? And had, had maybe there been adults who looked into my stuff rather than looking at my stuff, they might've asked a few of the questions that I would have wanted adults to ask of me. But all that said, art and all of its, its expressions have helped me through many times and many moments moving from clay to, um, or, or moving from mud rather, to canvases. And uh, my work specifically is found objects. As a young person living in poverty, we, we didn't have canvases. You, I, I, I didn't hardly even know what a museum was, but I knew that this expression I needed to do so. I found the things around me to express the feelings inside me and outside me. So collecting objects to put them together, to make something meaningful out of something discarded, to transform a piece into something that it's not supposed to be. I was doing that at 10 and 12 and 17. So here's the most recent example, right? For me, it's, it's a self-portrait. It's a self-portrait in iron and wood, and it is exactly how I feel about myself today. I found this in the forest, a little bit smoldering, right? I pulled this piece out, and I see that it's me. I see that, that it's gone through the fire. It's come out the other side. It is hardened. It is different than it used to be. Matter of fact, it is better than it used to be. So with my art, I get to reflect myself without having the, without having someone else have to do it for me. My art speaks to me, it speaks for me, it speaks with me, and it's always carried me through. So, and in that way, 
I see art as a very transformative process and it's so accessible. It's right here in front of us. It could be mud pies, it could be canvas, it can be sculptures, it can be whatever. And I love the idea that art is accessible to all of us, not just for the expression of the world, but for our healing, it is right there. We don't have to be trained. We don't have to be anything except willing to speak our truth on the page, on the mantle, in the pottery. This, for me, art, art not just healed me, but it saved me. And I've seen how it's reacted the same way to for a lot of other survivors. So art in all of expressions. And I will also say dance was very, very important to me as a young man having these issues of liking my body to a certain degree, but also knowing some people looked at my body like it was something else. So in order to get back in touch with my body, to really love it and um, to be excited in it, not caring what people, how people looked at me, um, I dissociated when I danced. I would go to clubs on a Friday or a Saturday night, wake up the next morning feeling so good and alive, not remembering one person or if I even danced with someone. I remembered the pulse, I remembered the beat, I remembered the feel of my body being the thing and me actually in control of it. I was dancing, I was moving and people were watching me move, not because they wanted me, but because my body was doing this thing that was so wonderful, you couldn't take your eyes off of it. Back in that time, we were known as B-boys and B-girls, right? So hip hop music was really right there on the cusps, on the cusp of everything. And that dance style saved me. It allowed me to, to throw out my anger, to really be aggressive and graceful in my moves and not have to dance with a partner and not have to feel like I'm beholden to somebody else's whims or movements. So the hip hop movement and uh, the b-boy, that dance revolution also saved me in that embodied way, keeping me in touch with this thing that has allowed me to walk through the world with such strength and grace. So art in all of its expressions. And I'll close with saying this, I believe that the movement as a whole, uh, my piece of it in it, expressing what I believe freedom and um, social justice should and could be and look like through my art expression. There's lots of folks who ask the same questions in different ways. How do we get to that point? And I've been lucky that through my art, through my untrained art, through my lived experiential art, I have a platform that I've never stood on before. And it's only because I'm in a space that truly accepts it, which is in movement making and mostly in nonprofits. So as an artist, I've been able to leverage my voice as part of a larger movement and actually have been able to keep this part going for many, many years. And I do believe that movement making without art, actually movement making is art. Revolution is, is the art of change. What do we do when we want change? The first artistic thing we do is we sing and we chant on our way to a march. We, we tell poetry to each other that was given to us from our ancestors and our folks who were moving before us and said, here, this is what fortified us. When we get to the march, we're holding posters and signs say, having pleas of why and having, um, I would say, statements of change and imagination. We're holding these things up. Movement and movement and movement making is nothing more than the art of change. So art in all of its ways and forms. I will say that as far as um, seeing myself reflected um, in 
America at the time when I was 10 years old, let's say. And when I really started thinking about what it meant, what equality meant, what justice meant, all you, um, my art, my harm didn't turn me into an artist. I was always an artist, but what happened to me at a young age made me think about simple words like hurt and not right and um, unfair. So, um, but I didn't really have any, I didn't, for certain, I didn't have a psychiatrist or a psychologist or anyone who looked like me in that space. But what I did have as I started off, I think one of the reasons I began with art is it felt like my culture. It felt like it's all I knew in my family. My mother, I remember her doing the same thing with pottery, with clay that I did a few years later with, with mud. So I want to say, and believe, and I do believe that, um, that my mother instilled in me that artistic creativity, that thing that is in that is in all of us, or at least in, on my side of the family. There, I remember us leaving uh, a space one time to go to another space, trying to trying to find safety and a new life. And I remember us living off the side of the road every so often. We'd pull off and sleep for a little while. Uh, sometimes we might sleep in a motel room, but I do remember my mother us going out to the beach and collecting abalone shells and us shining the insides of those shells and cracking those shells while she made earrings to sell on the side of the road so we can get to the next town. So um, for me, that really stuck in my brain. Oh, that you can kind of, I, I, I didn't see it as art at the time. I saw it as, a, as gifting, but um, that was something that my mom planted in my head that you don't have to buy things to make things. In fact, the reason that we call it making things is because you actually found it and you made it. You didn't go and find half of it and put something together. So that creative process began in my family in the bayou, came to California and stayed with me. But I will say as, as I got along later on uh, in the movement and really trying to find myself in the work and where where my my niche was, I I remember talking to one of the first black men who was also a survivor, and just being able to see someone who looks like you and has that shared experience, I didn't feel like a ghost anymore. I didn't feel like a unicorn. I didn't feel like I was the only one. In fact, there are so many times where I I I questioned myself when I got older. Did that really happen? because I've never heard of this from anybody else that looks like me and as a boy. So hearing that really, um, meeting that person really helped me see myself in that space. And it also solidified for me that, oh, my home and my space is with my people. And so as I got closer or deeper into the work, I also knew that my vision would be to take this art expression that I do and really do it for the folks that look like me and um, who could use it the most because I know that as black, brown, indigenous, Latino, Latin, Latino, Latinx people, art and art expression in all of its ways is really, it, it's, it's a birthright. It feels like we're born with it. It's part of the culture once we come out of the womb we're in music, or a poem has been written for us, or songs are being sung. So, and and also as I got as I got deeper into the movement, I I was able not only to start to seek out folks and collaborate and do the type of work I wanted to do, folks started to seek me out as well. But it was it was a long process, and now I will say that my my work is surrounded by, my national work is surrounded by the folks that 
I really dreamed of being with just real geniuses and powerhouses of change and imagination. I never thought that I'd be standing in that space with those folks, but here I am. And it's all been through art and the opportunity to express that and seek out the folks who might want to try it or who need it the most. But yes, in, in this time and in this place, not only have I found more of that diversity that I've wanted, I'm actually finding more and more of it. So it's, it's, it's a long time coming. It's a slow process to, to get folks of my culture or indigenous culture to really come out and say, this happened to me, particularly black men. Um, there's, it's, it's not just a stigma, but it's, it's a social caveat. If you say that, that breaks down the last vestment that you might have as a black man in this America, living in this world. I am not going to say that. I am not going to do that. I am not going to be that. And I get it. So really reaching out to my community is different than just an invite and saying that we're here. It's really about trust. It's really about um, family. And it's really about us being together in that space um, so that we can feel our collective energy. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been slow, but really, really rewarding. And the longer time goes, the, the, the more I, I, I do the work, the more of that inclusivity I'm seeing, the more people that look like me that aren't just movement makers, but psychiatrists, doctors that, that didn't look like me back in the day when I could have used them. There are some now. Uh, there's, there's a lot of black and brown folks that are really in the movement doing things and shaking things and creating the change that we all need in the spaces that we're working in for the, as we work towards that collective vision of change, nonviolence, uh, justice, peace, and all that comes with it. Yes, I will say that I, I have a back and forth struggle with, um, um, with religion as, as a whole, but, um, and, and I, I take that back. I do not have a problem with, with religion as a whole. Um, I have difficulty with the way that these good books are interpreted by some folks. So it, um, yes, however, I do feel very spiritual. And what I mean is, is if, if there is some religion that really is pure, that has nothing to do with me being bad before I was ever born and going to some place that may or may not exist, um, I like to believe that I am on a spiritual journey. And that spiritual journey means that in order for me to reach my height and my best, I have to be willing to help another person do the same thing that I want. And, and I can get there with spirit. Um, and what, what I'll say too is, is just because I have questions about mainstream religions, that doesn't mean that I don't like them. These are just questions for me that, that, that I struggle with. But I will say, that some form for the most part with uh, the folks that I deal and with, with me, spirituality, religion, some connectedness with, with nature or something else all being is really most important. I, I've found for folks who don't have that or who have lost that, they're still seeking it in some kind of way. It's, it's not like a lot of us can just remove it completely and walk on. But I, I think spirit, faith, religion is very important 
um, in the healing process. And for me, I think that why I say spirit is because I, I think that that healing process is better when we, the person, gets to choose what that looks like for us. So for me, I, I, I feel like a person who is embodied with spirit, who is trying to live in a spiritual way, and that includes thinking about everyone else. I have a problem with religions who that will exclude persons or communities. And, and uh, but those are some spaces as well where good work has been and still can be done. So I don't kick it to the curb. It's just, uh, it's just different, but it, it is important. Um, and my spirituality has been growing through throughout this healing journey of mine. So yes, I'll just say that I, I feel spirited, certainly when I do movement work, certainly as working with, o with Oasis and seeing how I can help the community and how that community can also help our overall cause to to um to serve our mission but yeah it's kind of long-winded but i feel i feel very inspired and spirited and spiritual that is in my life it it's actually central to my artwork it i just come from it at a different angle <music> What I love about art so much is that once you leave it, once you're done with it, um, it has its own voice. It, 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 it will always have that thing to say. It will stand alone without you and next to you. But um, good art, and, and with me, when, when we do our art expression projects, one thing we say is we're not looking for picture perfection. We're looking for perfect expression and um knowing that we're coming into a space and we're not a lot of us aren't artists or even have some trepidation about doing something artistic because we've not done that um art expression is a wonderful way it's a wonderful equalizer because we're not making art we're trying to we're trying to say something Abstract art is my least appreciated form of the visual arts because with other art, there's a scene already there. There's people already there. There's some kind of strain or structure of understanding. Even with um, impressionist art, there's at least a little bit of something you think you're looking at that kind of makes the thing and it gives you some kind of idea of what to think. Abstract art doesn't for me. It's usually just there and I don't know what to do with it. However, in these art expression sessions, abstract art is probably one of the premier ways of expression. And in that space, it is so beautifully understandable. We know what all that dark is. We know what that bruising blue looks like, but we also see that spot of white light in the corner. And we certainly know what that little speck of gold is. That's you. And it's in that space that that art will say that to all of us, even in the abstract. It's, it's a very powerful medium for healing and uh, self-reflection. And for me, I, I don't, at first I thought I was on some kind of healing journey where there's gonna be this end to this walk and I'm gonna be this survivor and say, yes, I have survived that thing. And um, I think I came to that place a long time ago. And I don't know what this is now. It's almost epic because I could have stopped what I was doing years ago. I, I felt whole. I felt wholer. I felt like I could walk alone and um, do this on my own. But why? Why? I have such a wonderful community. I've developed so many great friends and relationships. The best time of my life is right now. And it would seem that when you get together with survivors, right, we're telling our stories, we're boo-hooing, we're crying about the past. And at least with Oasis, with the work that I do, 
that is not the case. Joy is the center of our lives. And yes, this container is open for us to experience everything. And if your story needs to be told and held, we can do that and we will do that and we will always do that. And we're gonna celebrate the joy. We, in, we can hold both in that space. There's no need to separate them. And sometimes in that space, we've seen the despair connect with that joy in that moment. And we've seen that small crossover in 10 seconds. So there's a lot that can happen in a little eight and a half by 12 inch square with a bunch of people around you just wanting to feel you, wanting to hear you and wanting to look at your art. And that art stands because of that. That art will, after that, that art can't just be tossed. It just can't be discarded as if it's nothing. From that moment, that art piece is me. And folks have been able to share with me about me. And that's not a small thing just to be tossed away. And survivors appreciate coming into that space knowing that they can leave there with some reflection of hope, some reflection of clarity, some reflection of being, some voice. Mm -hmm.